So we've run our app and hopefully we can now see the homepage of our app open in our web browser. So we can see, again, it's running on localhost. This is our homepage. And to test whether the work that we've been doing works or not, let's go into the students section. So here we have our students index page, which we can see uh, the headings of a table to list our student data. Of course, we don't have any student data in our database yet uh, for it to display, but let's click on create new and we could create a sample student. If we hit create uh, before filling in all the fields, then we get some nice client side validation there. So the page hasn't refreshed, but the JavaScript has kicked in and showed this validation message before we submit the form. So this is telling us that enrollment date is a required field. So let's choose an enrollment date and let's hit create. And success, we have our student record appearing on the page. It is persisting. If we refresh our page, we can see it's still there. We can go into edit. Let's say we want to change my first name to my full first name and hit save. And there we can see that that's then updated. So let's double check what's going on underneath the hood. So if we go back in to Visual Studio, let's stop our app from running. Let's open up SQL Server Object Explorer as we looked at earlier. And if we refresh, we should be able to see our new database has been created. And there it is. If we open up tables, Give it a minute to refresh. Ah, and there we will see, we actually have all of the .NET identity tables that have been created. That's because of our uh, fix in the previous video, if we have identity set up. But more importantly, we have our course, enrollment and student tables appearing. Note, if you were following the original tutorial and didn't set up identity, you will not set, see all these ASP.NET user tables. We're just focusing on the course, enrollment and student. Let's right click on student and click on view data. And we should be able to see our sample record in the database. And indeed we can see it. So this is our database that's persisting the data. And if we rerun the app, then again, we will still see uh, this record there. Just a little note, um, now that we've stopped running our app, if we refresh this page, um, we'll get an error because it won't be able to access it because essentially we've stopped the server. So that's just a, a point of note. We'd have to rerun the app to have it running. But now we've demonstrated that we can indeed uh, add data to our database through our web application. We've essentially got a working web app. Uh, so congratulations if you've got this far. Um, you can now say that you can build a, a basic web application using Visual Studio, .NET Core and C Sharp along with scaffolding. So the next step on this tutorial is to look at seeding the database, which is where we add some sample data that runs when the database gets created.